Who will win this battle, Victor? Who looks more um, prepared for this? I'm going to have to vote for the dog. Just because uh, I see Nick extending a lot and getting stabbed in the armpit. <laughs> so. <laughs> I love my brother. What is that, you? He has fucking unsharpened sight. Unsharpened sight. It's fucking stick right in you. Not always. You can have gluten in things that don't even have wheat. Gluten um, binds things together. So not just gluten and wheat. Wheat, I don't do it all. So some things that have gluten are okay. Are, yeah, they may be wheat free, but they add gluten to things. But gluten's not wheat. It's really weird. Okay. You gotta hold it. Wait, you're turning it on. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Who was out there? Who was showing up right now? Before? Uh, Bart and all them were out there. Yeah, waiting making it? Showing. Yeah. Huh? They made it just in time. Right in time, dude. If I hadn't talked to them, they would have made it. Are you going to kill them with the right hook? Gil was trying to tell me about some crazy shit, and I'm like, the fuck, you're about to walk out. Yeah. It's crazy. You know, when you think that Nate, his uh, two fights against Connor were among your biggest pay per view ever, and you heard this crowd tonight, it seemed like he was the main event. They were Diaz, Diaz all night. Do you think that we have another, you know, Rousey, McGregor level star with Nate Diaz, given the way people are reacting to him now? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty tough to deny. Yeah, he's a needle mover now. <laughs> Fighting out of Stockton, California, Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz. You only lose when you lose, and I lose. You know, take me out, clean out. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna fight him. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I hear a whoop ass, and you know what I'm saying? Stay in the top, top category. You know, sometimes you lose just trying to go out there and bang and finish a guy and kill a guy, but sometimes you gotta have a little bit smarter of a strategy. So I'm just, you know, besides being harder and, uh, you know, just more of a more of a savage fighter than the guy, I'm gonna try to be smart about this fight and, um, you know, put it on him, try to do my best best I can. And uh, he's got he's got some things he better be worrying about, and I think he knows that. And if he, he, he doesn't know that, then better, better start paying attention. I, I can learn a little from every, every fight. Uh, I try to take, tr take stuff from each fight, win or lose, you know. Even when you win, you're not, you didn't do everything completely correct. I, besides my brother and my team being critics and people being critics, I, I'm, I try to be my own biggest critic. So um, I, I, I learned from watching that fight and plenty of other fights. And I'm still learning, so I got an open mind to paying attention to what's going on. And you know what I'm saying? I'm working hard and trying to be a smarter fighter. Not saying that I could beat everyone on the first day, but I'm capable of beating all of them. So we'll see what happens. And I'm looking for that number one spot. Uh, obviously, I uh, had a long chat with your brother just a couple of months ago prior to his fight against uh, BJ Penn. He talked about sort of his uh, his love of the sport or maybe lack thereof, how he doesn't really enjoy doing this as much as he once did. Do you share the same feelings, how you don't really like fighting, but you like the training and whatnot, but you don't actually like the, the sort of art of fighting when it comes down to it? I love fighting. I love I love the, the martial art. I love martial arts in general. I love... Uh, I just love... You know what I'm saying? I grew up on, on you know, Van Damme and Bruce Lee movies, and I was like, that's what I want to do. Me and my brother would do karate, and I love everything about fighting. I think it's great. I can't get enough of it. I sit at home at all night till five in the morning sometimes, just what, looking up martial. I'm not watching at home all night, you know, UFC wrestling matches. I do half the night, <laughs> but it usually turned into watching, you know, more his historical martial arts stuff. And but sometimes, I think what he's trying to say too is the, the way this sport is, the way it goes. You know, it's not 
it doesn't favor the get the better fighters. I like I like good fighters and I can appreciate really good fighters, you know what I'm saying? That the best card I could imagine lately was that uh Shogun and Henderson and uh Vandalay. Vandalay it was just like a step back in the time only with a cage now, you know. So it was it's just like two guys going in there. And I remember watching Henderson Henderson and Ninja Hua fight, and that was like one of my favorite fights because those were my favorite fighters at the time. So I could appreciate really good fights and fighters, but I could appreciate the wrestlers too and the, and the way way stuff goes. But it, it, I don't like how it favors it, and I don't like how you're gonna have you know all champions be collegiate wrestlers just, just because they're better. I thought mean, this is the ultimate fighting championships, not the ultimate wrestling championships you know so whenever you got a guy in there fighting and trying to damage his opponent and just like do good technical good stuff that's it that's an art compared to athleticism and because we could do that too that athletic athleticism stuff but it, it, it's just good to see good martial arts that right, sucks but you know this this whole thing is a gamble <clears throat> fighting's a gamble it's like you know i got I'm, I feel I'm better than most everybody in this UFC as far as fighting is concerned, but uh, you gotta perform and uh, you know, it's hit or miss sometimes, but you gotta, you gotta train hard and make sure it's hit every time. But uh, unfortunately, last time it was a miss. So I just try to stay busy, capitalize and not try to dread it too bad. That's what happened. And you can't, you can't get hit in the eye. You can't lose fights. And, and uh, so, but uh, next time, if there's a next time, <laughs> I'm gonna get that motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, all right, you get one black belt. Me and Nick, I was like, I don't care. Send whoever you want. But it's great to have Nick. Nick's the best fighter in the world. So it, as far as I'm concerned, pound for pound, that's the best fighter there is. So I don't care, you know? And um, there's no one better to have in my corner. Him and Gilbert Melendez, Jake Shields are the best people I feel the most comfortable with. I'll fight whoever wants to fight, whoever they want me to fight. I've been fighting every three to five months for the last seven years, so I haven't really had no breaks, and it's consistent. I'm consistent. I, I never turn down a fight. I accept every fight, even when I go to 170 and the don't make weight, and fight, I'm fighting people at 185. That happened before, even though no one talks about it. I fought, fought Rory Mark, and he weighed 183, and it was a middleweight fight. So don't forget, I fought a middleweight 170. I do whatever they ask. So and you beat him too. I won that fight. He's tough, but yeah, I won that fight, and um, I don't, I don't complain about it. Whatever, man. I'll fight whoever. I don't want no breaks. I don't want no, no. I'm not gonna tell. I'll fight any of these people. Anybody who, who, who's in, in the same bracket as me. We're not friends, and we're not, you know, we're, we're not. We don't train together, and it, it's like, um, it's just where, you know, you gotta fight me. I'm not gonna put on a front and act like we're not fighting. So. I knew it was probably him. It's like this, like usually when I fought, um, when I fought uh, Kurt Pellegrino, I got picked up at the airport with Josh Neer. And when I fought, when I fought Josh, when I fought Pellegrino, I got picked up at the airport with Josh Neer. We shook hands, we talked, we were cool. We fought, we won, we talked and it was all good. And uh, he fought my brother and we, we had a good conversation and it was cool, I liked him. And then I went home, and then they're like calling, and they're like, your friend Josh Near. So I'm like, there I went, like, best friend with the guy, good friend with the guy that I'm fighting. So I went, I went to that fight and fought. Got done with that fight. They sent me next to Clay Guida. So ha have us, have us, you know, do an interview together and want us to be friends and talk. I was like, all right, good fight. I'm going to see you, whatever. I go home, they call, you're fighting Clay Guida. And then I go fight Clay Guida. I sit in the, sit in the room with uh, Joe Stevenson, who I was already cool with from the past. And then I do whatever and say what up, good fight. Go home, you're fighting Joe Stevenson and carry it on to Melvin Gillard. And, and so I'm like, I make the mistake every time. And it's not, it's not like, I'm not trying to bully nobody. Like I said, it's all good. I could respect anybody who fights in the UFC. It's a tough sport. Everybody's got to work hard and train hard. They're athletes. I'm an athlete and uh, I think it's great what they're doing, but I got to fight, so you go your way and I'll go mine. I got friends, I got my team, and I'm not going to put on a front. But I'm not trying to be a bully. I'm just trying to, you know, do what I got to do to survive in this UFC, MMA, 
type of game? Um, I don't know. Anything that, that don't funny stuff. I don't trick myself like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like I'm gonna kill the next person or if I, you know, I could go out and get knocked out hella quick first day next fight. So that's what I'm expecting. Expect for the worst. Hopefully it don't happen. All these motherfuckers are scared to look at my face. Everybody, these fools are all front, man. Everybody wants to act like they're gonna fight somebody, but they're gonna look at the the ground when they walk by me and act tight in the corner. You know what I'm saying? So. Don't act like you want to fight or act high if you're not going to do shit, you know? It's just the name of this fucking silly ass, unreliable ass uh, game. That's that's just, that's my opinion. I don't know. I may be in an uproar, but no none of you guys want to see me, but they want to act like they do. So that's, that's, uh, that's up to whoever, but I'm around. Check you out. If somebody wants to fight, if one of you guys wants to man up, little Anthony Pettis, little fucking Eddie Alvarez, any of you guys, want to man up and fight the real fighters, then we could get it. But I don't think anybody wants that, so that's how it's going to be. And I, you know, what, uh, Gilbert won, so fuck, fuck you, Eddie. I understand it, though, I could deal with it better than most people, you know, because I've been in this for so long. I've been fighting since I was 18, and I'm uh, 30 now. I have more fights than anyone in the UFC. I have 25 fights. So, so do you feel like you, it took way too long for you to get your due? No, nah, it's like, you know, sometimes people pick and choose, but I never picked and choose. I like just fought everybody all the time. <laughs> I've been fighting top 10, top five guys since like my third, fourth fight in the UFC. So I got 23 fights with top 10 contenders. And uh, that's what I was trying to say. People were like, there's no way Nate beats Connor. I'm like, why? You're riding a bandwagon, my because it's like, this guy's fought. If he fought, went through a like, quarter of the people I went through, he had already been done weeded out already, you know? Not to big league anybody, but like, like it better make sense when I'm gonna fight under the, the 135 pound girls, like, who've been in the UFC for two years. You know what I'm saying? I'm not handing it over like that. I'll headline or I'm gonna come, come in, don't treat me like you know what I'm saying? And um, because I just knew it was, I'm next level. It's next level. Right. You know what I'm saying? These fighters aren't done what I did. They ain't put in the work I put in. They haven't fought the people I fought. They got the records I have. And I'm still been over the amount of time I've been doing it. Nobody's done that. You're in high school. What are you going to do? Beat up the school newspaper guy and be the coolest kid on the block or you're gonna beat the hardest hardest dude in the block or in the school you know it's all good with everybody if we ain't fighting and we're not we're not lined up to to, to meet up and fight then it's all good with everybody but if we're gonna fight stay your ass over there and i'm still <laughs> here you know so that's how i feel and uh Everybody else is like, that's unsportsmanlike, but this is not a sport. No. You know what I'm saying? You could be like, we're on a Fox Sports and everything, but this is, you know, this is a fight, and uh, <clears throat> and that's genuine. I'm the only one acting like that. That I mean, there's a few, but I'm the only one acting like we're in a real in a real fight because you know why? Because we are in a real fight, and that's a real attitude, and it's a, the way I really feel about it. And uh, sometimes I'm the makes me the bad guy because of that, you know. It's nothing wrong being a villain. Yeah, well, it's work time and you good. want people to think you're you're nicer than you look on TV, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was just in a yacht in Cabo two weeks ago with my boy Tyson Ribby, and they called, and I was like, I like, all right, like, the good thing is I got sick in Mexico, and I, I didn't eat for like three days from drinking the water or something, and I was like all jacked up, so when I got home, I was kind of light. And uh, they called, so they like, hey, yeah, let's make this weight, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, uh, and uh, Joe too. My <laughs> man. Uh, every dude, it's like hey, hey, it's nothing out of the norm, man. I, I train with some straight beats, you know what I'm saying? Who, my boy Chris, uh, my boy Chris Avila right here, the pro boxer, he has me in training with headgear on, and I'm almost like, whoo, no more of this. <laughs> so I, I've been hit by some hard, hard shots, and uh, it, <laughs> don't, don't, don't fade me, don't scare me. I land a. Uh, I land a lot of punches on people and then they always shoot on me and that's why I got a lot of submission finishes. But the reason why is because they shoot because they don't want no more on no more punches landing on their head. So so the submission comes from the punches. Otherwise it's gonna be a knockout. So well I'm the one forty five pound champ now, so I guess uh, I'll be the champion in that division for a while. 
And then, um, I don't know, man. Time, time will tell. Money talks. We'll see what happens. What are you going to do with that money that you want? Because I know you got a nice purse here. I don't know. I'll buy a yacht. <laughs> Drop the mic. Walk off. You can have a yacht. Your brother, Nick, has talked about how he doesn't really enjoy fighting. Like, when people ask him, are you excited about this fight? He doesn't like that question. Uh, I've never heard you talk about it. Do you, do you enjoy it? I understand him. I feel the same way. It's a, do I enjoy it? Hell no. I've been fighting for 10 years, butts in my ass, and people go in there with all these high mighty hopes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to hold my hand in the air. I'm going to say this, and it's going to be great. I think I'm more so like I might get my ass knocked out or cho submitted or choked or unconscious, and guess who's watching? Everybody who you don't want to. Your mom, your friend. So uh, it's nerve-wracking, and it's, it's something I could deal with, but people gotta understand all that I'm the best I'm gonna knock it I mean it's a way to hype themselves up pump themselves up and ma make it like they love it but they feel people feel like that and uh, uh I also think I have the ability to beat everybody you know what I'm saying but it, it's a gamble and uh it's a it's a scary way to live life it's my whole life 10 10 years I've been fighting now and uh, I've been doing amateur stuff five years before that so 15 years of fighting pretty much in com competition it, uh, it, you know it's my job and I'm gonna do it and I gotta do what I gotta do uh, I don't do anything else we had a spot downtown Lodi for a while and uh, the gym was it was a small place and it was kind of high in rent so um, I said I thought we needed a little more space Nick everybody at the gym and they yell let's go down the road to find a bigger spot. So now we're at 1744 Ackerman. We got a big, like two times, three times the space. And we got a full facility there now, mats and boxing ring and cage. And it's cool. It's good to have a good place to train in. It's a martial arts gym. It's with jujitsu and uh, boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, and uh, karate, stuff like that. We got all types of training, so just uh, self defense and martial arts. They just, you know, the main strength is going to be as an MMA fighter, but I'm a boxer, I'm a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Uh, I do all that stuff. Uh, and I want to master each, each, uh, each thing, each uh, sport, you know. I want to master all of them. Even the jiu-jitsu guy, right? I think I'm the best jiu-jitsu guy in the world, too. I train with Kron Gretzky, he's one of the best guys in the world on the ground. And I train with the best boxers in the world and the best kickboxers. I train with Joe Shelley, like one of the best and Kevin Ross, those are the best guys in the world. And uh, so I hate I want to hear boxers state their opinion or jiu-jitsu guys state their opinion or well, I'm better than everybody at all these things. <laughs> so that's my that's just what, I, what, I, what, I, what I'm thinking about that. So I hate hearing people talk. He does pretty good at, on the ground. He does pretty good on the ground. I do all that stuff. Uh, and I train with top 10 in all those those sports, so. Yeah. Hey, and all the fighters are so stupid, they're scared. Well, they don't even want to say my name because no one wants to fight, but I don't, guess what? It's all good, I don't want to fight little bitches either. <laughs> <laughs> pound for pound, I'm number one. Yeah. And uh, everybody else, you got any shit. No one's fought as much as me, I have the record. I have the most fights in the UFC. Landed the most punches, got the most pay-per-views. I hold the record, so. Um, it, it's what I've been, I lived in for so many years, so it felt not, <clears throat> it felt like when I wasn't in fight camp for a while, like something, like a fight camp needed to happen. <laughs> well, the same thing was going on, I was doing all the training, there was just no fights, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, the, it was just a little bit, I was, I was, I felt like I won my last fight. I'm not gonna cry over spilled milk. It's just what it is, and especially in this UFC game, because I've lot of, lost a lot of fights that I didn't lose. And uh, I don't, I don't. Even if, like, let's just say, I don't, I don't more, more so than I think. Like, I didn't. I more for sure didn't lose that fight. You know what I'm saying? But they're treating it like they treated it like. You lost. Go down the list. Get out of here, type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When not when when. I'm, I've been like lost a lot of good months of my life just sitting there sweating fights I've lost I didn't lose 
And uh, I'm like, you guys paid me way too much to be sitting here playing this stupid game and doing what you guys <clears throat> want me to do. So I'm cool. I'm going to step it out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then two years flew by. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and I'm, the whole time I'm sitting there waiting, like, when is somebody going to step this stupid ass up and start calling for a fight? Because that's what I, that's what I did. I'm like, you're the guy getting all the love and all the all all the that I've worked hard for, and they're just handing it over and promoting it. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I I put work in. And if you ain't sitting there, if you're not thinking that you this guy's getting what you work for, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you you not working hard enough because mm -hmm. that's, that's thought of over miles and rounds and, and uh, over training f thoughts, you know what I'm saying? A lot, a lot of work was put into those thoughts and if you're not spending that and saying that then you're not, shouldn't even be in that position. So I, I saw what was happening and I went out and I took it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, this is what I'm about to do. And two years flew by, I'm like, I ain't going to be begging nobody to Fight, fight. I ain't gonna. I don't need to fight. I beat the best guy at the moment. I beat the best guy, and you guys are just treating me like van vanished. And then I'm like, all right, well, f me, so f you. But then after a certain while, I'm just like, what's wrong with all these fighters? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm a bigger draw, bigger fight than than anybody in the game, and you guys are just sit back and like not participate and like black sheep me, and not black sheep. It's like uh. What is it called? Ostracize. When they're like, put me on the outskirts of the whole conversation. He dropped from the rankings. He dro he's this, that. He's turning down fights. I'm like, yeah, dude, you're just gonna, you're gonna start offering me prelim fighters and be like, oh, he does He turned this down. Like you guys were using that against me. You know what I'm saying? I'm the top two two fighter in the in the whole game right now. Still three, man. John Jones, three. You know what I'm saying? And if like and, and, and that's not fighting for three years. I'm like pfft, I don't need to fight. I sneeze loud and everybody hears about it. But then it's like, hold up, you guys just want me to sit out in Venice. This is what everybody wants. So uh I'm over here like not feeling I told I said it after the fight the first time that I was institutionalized in this fight game and stuff. And it really stayed like that. And what's happening was I'm telling myself to take take it easy and don't train and don't do stuff because I'm not fighting, I need to, you know, but I'm like, fuck all that. So I'm training all these the last three years harder than anybody fighting. So I'm like, it's wear and tear. I'm like, if I'm gonna be training for all these, for with all my fighters for their fights and train for a lifestyle, and it's my hobby to train, you know what I'm saying? Why where, where I live is like a fight, like I'm here for recovery from home, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I need to go just train somewhere else. I need a beach and a, and some palm trees and some nice looking <laughs> because where I live is is just like it's hell. It's where I grew up in the same thing and only from a different perspective now because now I got some nice <laughs> and uh but I don't have um I have everything you need but but there's nothing to do where I live. It's it's a it's a small smaller town. Everything shuts down at ten, eleven o'clock. It's quiet. It's, it's, I'm living in a fight camp with no fight, so if something needed to ha something needed to happen, it was like <clears throat> I think the part of not fighting was not even the fight wasn't with the fighters no more. They're not on my level. The fight was with the whole organization, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm losing this fight if I'm just gonna sit here and die off in this little town. You know what I'm saying? Cause I could go all, all the concerts and go out and do all this cool that's offered to me all the time, but it's old. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I, I, I want to just get back to what I do. And uh, I didn't even want to fight when I was fighting for all those years. <clears throat> it's just what I did. I was on orders from a coach and my, my bro and, uh, and living the, the lifestyle and it institutionalized me, institutionalized me to that. Is that the right word I'm using? But that's yeah. what I mean. I, I, it makes sense, right? Yeah. So it like made me, made my, my whole life is just arranged around that now because I've been fighting for, I'm not even, I'm younger than everybody. I'm 34. I'm, I've been fighting for um, since I was 18, 19 years old. How many years is that? I'm the youngest OG in this whole shit, You know what I'm saying? Still here. I'm still winning the series too. You know what I'm saying? Still hopping in, finding top contenders, doing my thing. Hey, remember when they, um, when they were like, Nate Diaz was removed from the rankings. And they'd be like, oh, you're out of the rankings. And now I've seen uh, people, the managers, and shit, writing on the internet, like, 
Can, you got removed from the rankings. You ain't shit now. Like, <laughs> you don't know this, but I already called in a range of fight. I went 70. That day, they moved me from the rankings. I'm like, how did I sit in the rankings for three years anyways if I wasn't fighting? Mm -hmm. And with all their bad mouth and they were doing them. And see what I'm saying? That was my fight was doing or, with the organization. So what I'm gonna, like, you know what? It's like, me and you ain't got no love for each other. We're like on, on going head to And then you're like, all right, well, hey, man, I know we don't like each other, but this guy real quick, <laughs> how about no? <laughs>
Lost the decision, then then I got the the, the Osana's fight. Didn't train a day. Hurt myself. I'm like, I got bills to pay though, so I'm about to do this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I tried to fight him. I don't even know who else I fought afterwards. What I'm saying is, is like this whole time I've been in UFC since I was 21, I fought top contenders, mm -hmm. and if they beat me, they got title shots, and then it became somebody in the name or something. And most of the time, they lost decisions. They weren't even real losses. I'm like, all right, whatever. And then uh, <clears throat> I'm winning the series. This is what it started. I'm still I'm winning the series. I'm like, I'm still, and now I'm right here fighting this dude. And then after that, if I, I, everything comes out clean, I'm going to fight for a title fight. Uh, they were just offering me GSP, Khabib, and Connor for a tournament. And I'm like, OK, well, that's what we're going to do. Well, that sounds, I mean, that sounds like a good plan to me, though, uh, Yeah, right? it, was, I mean, it was great. They wanted to put, put me with GSP first, so, and I know he had some to sell it with my bro. I'm like, hey, mix that little mix up around. Mm -hmm. I'll fight Khabib or Connor, and then whatever happened with them and everything it kind of went. Psh, everybody had their their issues. I was like, all right, and then they all offered me Woodley, and it was on short notice. And uh, that in between, they're already saying I'm turning down all these fights, but they're still calling me for these fights. So I'm like, is that not them just fucking degrading me? And so why why were they saying that you were turning down fights? Did you ever turn down a fight? No, but when you come in with some petty, like like, like with what? Like what were they offering? I can't even remember. Like, who can we think of that? Uh, like, just lanes. I don't. I don't can't. I can't remember the name. Mm -hmm. And then they said, "I'm like," <laughs> and then, like, like I wouldn't even talk to them, man. Like they called you with this. Like I'm like, all right. Yeah. I didn't even say no. I didn't even say yeah. I just felt like, all right, they're with me. And then it's all over the news. And so now everywhere I go, quit turning out fights. Post a picture of me at the beach, like, I love the beach. Take a fight, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, that's cold. <laughs> so why am I going to fight for these people and go out of my way to go try to fight when it's like that? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, and, that, and what I'm saying is that <clears throat> with all the criticism that I got for, for, for not fighting too, especially from the, any fighter talking, you're out of pocket. Shut your up, I still have more fights than any of you not mm -hmm. fighting. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it just, it's just like, when I'm gonna fight, like, I never called you guys and said, can I fight Khabib and Connor and, and GSP? Can I call, can I fight Tyrone Willie? That fight fell through because they were like short notice. I was like 172 pounds, 74 pounds. They're like, hey, you wanna fight welterweight title in like three weeks or something? And I'm like, yeah, let's do this. But yo, give me some, give me some, we gonna have to money up for this. But I'm with it whenever I not showed up, too. I'm like, I'll pop up and, and do my thing. And then uh, that's how that fight went. So I'm like, I'm like how, am I, how am I turning down fighters that I ain't worth it, but I can fight any title fight? If I have all the best fights offered to me, I'm like, well, that, you know what I'm saying? And then they, they, they bad mouthed me off it. So three years of that went on. And then I was like, all right, you know what? Pettis is knocking out Thompson and doing all this cool shit. And when he fights, and I'm like, man, that's an eligible opponent. Mm -hmm. And I dig that, so that's what I, I'm not. You know what I'm saying? I don't. <clears throat> I don't need to be f signing up for fights though, just to, um, just cause I, like people. I want to punch someone in the face. And, like that's not. That's not cool. I want to like. I want to fight. That's gonna <clears throat> motivate me to want to fight. Not a fight that's just for like some and some extra cash when I already got a whole bunch of. You ever? It was way things? better when I was sent in like a soldier. <laughs> Now I'm like, don't no tell me. <laughs> and then uh, <clears throat> every day some changes, though. You know what I'm saying? Especially with all the fights going on. The fighters are boring on the whole game. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, where's, like, dude, where are people at? Where's Jake Ellenberger? And, like, uh, and uh, you know how many people I saw, like, come into the game way after me, win a couple fights, be this new hot become a champion you're the guy and then you're on a downhill and then you have one more win and then you're and then you're gone like so many of those have came and gone and i was here and i'm still here and it's just like you gotta be be doing something something good for for anybody to want to unless you're just some and everybody's just telling you go fight him little go fight him little that's just a bunch of little <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And the UFC or anybody could have told me whatever. My brother and my coach would have told me to do something. That's what, what it was. <clears throat> but time changes, man, and everybody's like, 
It comes to a point where no one wants to tell you <clears throat> I would have a goal. I'd be like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to fight this guy and do my best to win. And then when I win, I'm going to do something with that. Mics are on. You better make something happen. You, cause like, what are you gonna do? Just fight. That's what I'm saying. What am I gonna fight? What are you gonna fight somebody for just to get paid? It's different now. It's like, what? I, just for a pay, paycheck like that? You kind of deserve your ass whipped if you're just fighting, fighting for only just just for some more money. Cause you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm di I came from normal. Like, what I'm gonna? I'll, I need more money. Well, then I'll go s sit at a dispensary and smoke weed with people for two hours for hell of money. <laughs> That's getting boring, you know what I'm saying? But uh, man, I've been kicking and and punching my head and been in a lot of fights for a long time. And it's like, now when someone knocks someone out all cool on TV and everybody's like, that guy's the man. You're like, hold up. That's who I want to fight, you know what I'm saying? The guy mm -hmm. who's doing, doing a, I feel like I'm in a position to be able to pick and choose because I already done more than all these fighters, you know? So that's my thoughts on that. It's cool, but it's like I would I would like to uh, just fight somebody when it's. Who are the champions? Right now? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, who's you... the champion in my weight class? Fifty-five and seventy. Fifty-five is Khabib. Okay. Seventy is Kamaru Usman. Okay. I mean, it'd be I, nice. I, I feel like I'm just better and cooler than those guys. <laughs> what the hell do I want to fight them for? Pettis is cooler than both of them. Fight, fight wise. You know what I'm saying? Remember Street Fighter? I want to see that. Versus that guy, mm -hmm. like you know what I'm saying, or just at school when you just knew two dudes who kick, and you were like, I wonder what would happen if them fools fight, you know? It's mm -hmm. Like, that's that's the one that I think about it from an outside perspective too. If I was somebody who want to watch me fight in the UFC, I would want to <clears throat> watch me fight Connor or Pettis or you know, Masvidal just did his thing the other day. That was great, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like stuff like that, <laughs> with all due respect, motivates you to want to fight that person because they've done some great. So, stick that in my bag of great, you know, in the fight fight world. It's like the guys, the guys kicking them. That's where you start fighting in the fight for in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. Fight the best fighters, the mm -hmm. coolest fighters, the, the best. <clears throat> That's the sport I signed up for when I signed up. So I, ha I want to ask you directly. Uh, sitting here, do, do you think, and, and I'm asking as a fight fan, do you think that you and Connor will fight a third time? Time will tell, I'm sure. I'm sure probably, but it's about, I think it's about just timing. And do you think you and Khabib... If he still fights, if they still fight, if everything lines up, that's the only guy that will fight right now is those two. I don't want to fight no Usman or no... Um, Khabib's the guy, I'll fight him. If, if he wanted to, though, I ain't no bully. I already tried, I was like, what's up, let's do this. And then, <clears throat> whatever, they're just the champions now. It's like, okay, champ, I was here before you, way before you, you know what I'm saying? They just, oh, I'm the champ, I'm gonna fight the guy in line. You're gonna fight the guy I beat, Poirier, Dustin Poirier, the guy who hurt himself, the guy who took the money and didn't do the fight. Whatever the reason, he's not very cool for that reason to me. I'm a fan of uh, martial arts and fight. But when you do stuff, that takes you out of my cool book. Lost cool points. <laughs> I mean, are you going to get this figured out, or is, is it possible that you fight Anthony Pettis? Does anyone here know anything about this stuff? Know about this stuff, or am I just talking to him? <laughs> I'm wondering if I'm just like, what is this guy talking about? Yeah. We're supposed to get dinner. I mean, we're kind of in the weeds occasionally, you Sometimes, and I. Sometimes, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Like, well, I'm like, you feel me? Like, I don't think these people are doing me. No, what, what, what I'm doing. We're almost done. I just want to ask it's you. Because when you're in a room of people, like I'm talking to everybody too. Oh, man. Well, just a couple How's more questions. Do you guy? think that this is going to get figured out, or do you think that there is a possibility that you'll fight Anthony Pettis and then you don't fight again for a long time? <sighs> and uh, how it plays out, I would like to just get along with everybody, and I would like to just keep the keep the show rolling for a while, you know. Mm -hmm. I got, I've been training. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ready to, <clears throat> ready to be in the game. I don't. I'm not gonna say back in the game because I've been in the game. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just, I'm just. Hopefully this one leads into, you know. And if, it, and if, it, uh, doesn't work out the best way, then 
<laughs> nigga, I'm still going to find my way back at you or back up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not worried about it. Yeah. How many fights do you have left on your UFC contract? I don't even know. I think a few. Would it, could you ever see a day where UFC is maybe not, not where it's at anymore? Yeah, do you have interest in boxing? Could we see you in another sport? <laughs> at this point, it's not even the, uh, the, the organizations or anything. It's about, for me, I want, that's what I'm saying. I want to fight the best guys. I want wherever the best, best. <laughs> right now, it's for sure in the UFC, you know? And uh, that's just like how it is, though. Who knows if Usman or Khabib are even going to be champions in two weeks? Changes, you know? These guys. Anything I hope else? somebody does some cool shit, though, after, in the meantime. You know, mm -hmm. I enjoy good fights. I do a lot of fight watching when I'm not watching nowadays. Yeah. Before, when I was younger, I used to watch everything. <clears throat> but now it's like, all right, this isn't very entertaining, so I'm going to a concert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, man, you don't ever stop, do you? You come with me. Fran Caballero asked, nunchucks or throwing stars? Nunchucks. Yes. Yes. Hey, no, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a you know what you mean? Absolutely. You know you hit yeah. yourself in the head with those at some point, though. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Be careful with those. So everyone had a role model whilst growing up. Which fighter inspired you? It's okay, Nate. I know I inspired you. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. You and Gracie? Gracie family member? Uh, no, I'm not always uh, Hicks and Gracie, Hoyce, Henzo. Welcome to MMA Noise. I'm your host, Mike Strzok, along with the legend, Henzo Gracie. And, you know, Nate Diaz had a tremendous fight against Conor McGregor. It's beautiful the way that Nate set up. The moment that he tried to slide the, the, the forearm in, McGregor sink it in his jaw and hit him once just to pop his head up and right under. So this is, this is old style. This is the, the, the way that you used to do in the beaches when we got fights on in the Rio. beach for surfing, yes. They represent the hardcore of Jiu-Jitsu, like the way that was taught to me. They well, learn it. It's like, it's, they, don't take, they don't take no insult, you know, no insult would be without retaliation. So it's, it's they were raised the right way. Well, of Good course. kids. It's, it's, it's a, such a great sport. And you see, once they fell in love with and they stick with, Jiu-Jitsu gave back to them, you know. And I'm extremely glad that happened to such a good people. It's well, great representatives of our sport. Every time Nate steps in there, he does a beautiful match. Nobody deserved more than Nate. And, you know, Nate get in there and everybody was betting against. He was against all odds. He did an unbelievable job. Enzo Gracie, everybody. Nick and Nate Diaz are very good representatives for on the fighting scale. The top of the, the top, you see right there. They know what they're doing. They got a lot of endurance. They got heart. You see um, technique. Of the monster inside of my head, got four legs, four arms, two heads, 300 pounds with 4% body fat. A punch will go through a cement wall. That's my imagination. <laughs> Thank you.
All you motherfuckers need to start trading some G. <laughs> That was my inspiration, yeah. starting training in. I like, you know, Van, Van Damme. Isn't around here somewhere? So everything, since you have that beautiful boxing, bam, 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 bam. And Nate felt like, wait a second, I said, well, well, hold on, Nate. Don't worry. You can also move and kick. Which is like, like boxing, boom, boom, boom. You touch the guy, you push him out, he wants to go outside, bam, you got to stop him. What's the most important thing you've learned from martial arts, not just for fighting, but in life, too? These are some serious questions. Yeah, yeah. Question. Well, it's deep. Martial arts is just my life, so anything I know comes from martial arts. That answers the question is pretty much. Yeah, well, certainly loyalty, I know, has been a big thing for you. Big time loyalty, yeah. It's everything. Honor, <laughs> yeah. nice. Okay. Hey, I wouldn't call any of us troublemakers growing up. Sometimes trouble would find you. But no, I think we did all right growing up. Yeah, it's ridiculous how people think about you. I get emails and stuff, and just weird, weird letters, and I'm just like, why am I even reading this? All they see is us on TV fighting. You know what I'm saying? And like, like he said before, there's, there's really no class in someone elbowing you in the face. So why should I have class about taking elbows to the face? You know, why should I watch my mouth? You're trying to knock me out and hit me with elbows and bloody my face in front of my f friends and family and the whole world. So I don't, I don't care about putting, putting my middle finger up to that. You know what I'm saying? Would you ever consider fighting your brother inside the octagon? We sure are sure right doing Nick. Right come on, man. Say, Loyalty is most important. You <laughs> ask him to fight his I brother. I want to fight Luke. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go, Luke. Nice. That's a stupid question, dude. Yeah, we're both different fighters. We're different weights. You know, it's my brother. I mean, like, like who would who would win? And it's like, okay, why? Like, or what? Like, it's... That's stupid, you know? You're gonna ask me that? What, can you put your finger on what it is that moves the needle? Like, what what, it, what do you think it is that people see in him that they... Well, I think it's stuff like, I, I did the fighter meeting and, and uh, I specifically told him not to swear on ESPN. He looked right at me and said, motherfucker, right after the, uh, when he was doing his interview on ESPN. And, uh, you know, stuff like that. It's just, it, I, I read this story I didn't read the story. I, re I read the headline uh, from one of the big papers that, that had written a story about this. And it said, UFC needs an anti-hero. And here he is, Nate Diaz, you know, <laughs> and it's true. It's just, uh, I, s <clears throat> I said it leading up to this fight. He's like, he's the guy that says, fuck you to the man, but he never really says, fuck you to the man. He's always, actually, every time I see him, Nate is cool. Um, but they, they, he just has this, um, just has this thing that people like. What's it feel like to have Nate Diaz back in the mix? I mean, yesterday, what was your reaction when you saw he went on stage? He was lighting up some kind of cigarette, passing out into the crowd. It was almost like an up and smoke to a concert. What was your reaction to that? I mean, it's I always expect the unexpected <laughs> with, 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 with the Diaz brothers. Cannabis helps me just the quality of life when you train them for these fights, especially it kind of gets rough. You like working hard busting your ass and I think it helps me get through my day and helps me get through workouts. I better smoke a little weed and take a run and do a workout and enjoy it like a little trip. I won't even be planning on working out and then I'll smoke a little bit and then I just warm it up in my head and I'm ready to reduce it. I would because I train better usually when I smoke. You know, I mean not every time, sometimes I have some bad training sessions. That's just the name of the game. So I think if I was smoking all the way up to the fight, I'm gonna smoke in the fight, if, you know. So for sure, promoting the other fighters more than us. Yeah, they don't want to push that look though, because they're they're real mainstream about things, you know. And that's not the look they're they're going for for some reason. When I think it's the exact look they should be going for. Me and my brother, the biggest some of the biggest names in MMA, and uh, that's from being held back the whole time from what they're trying to do. They don't want us to be on top of the game. If I was looking from the outside in, that makes a cooler fighter to me in general, even if he could fight or not. Just the way he goes about things. In the long run, fuck all the other companies because, dude, I'm winning so much love from the cannabis industry. There's money to be made, so on the business side, it's good. And on the just fucking cooler in general side, it's great.
What's the Twitter fight with Justin Bieber all about? Oh uh, yeah, he, he, hey man, uh, I saw Drake too, they put their opinions out, but they must not be too, too hardcore fans of the sport. They're just, uh, they're, uh, they're riding a bandwagon, you know, they were like... <laughs> so Drake and Bieber are bandwagon fans of the UFC? Oh, I don't know, they just put their opinions out about how, how they were going go for him, and I'm like, hey, this is America. <laughs> <laughs> the real fighter, the real martial artist, and a real fan of the sport knew who was going to win that fight. So, so Bieber walks up right now, you say what to him? Smack! Actions <laughs> <laughs> do speak louder than words, that's yeah. for sure. No, it's all good. Beaver's all good. It's, it's whatever. There's also rumors that you might retire. Have you heard those? Uh, no, but that sounds interesting. I might do that. <laughs> <laughs> Go out on top. <laughs>